Earth has a cancer problem. It's estimated that last year there were 19.3 million cancer cases and 10 million cancer deaths worldwide. And that figure is expected to grow by 70% over the coming two decades. Scientists are working hard to understand the environmental, lifestyle and genetic causes of cancer, but the truth is that 50% of all cancer cases have no known cause and there is no cure. Dr. Trisha LaRose from the University of Oslo believes that some answers might be found in space. And the motivation behind the project is more than just scientific curiosity. I have a personal connection um, to cancer. I'm from a small mining town in northern Ontario, Canada, and uh, many of my family members and, and close relatives, uh, friends, have passed away from cancer. So it's very personal to me. Dr. LaRose is the lead scientist of Tumors in Space, a research experiment that will take place on the new Chinese space station in 2025. The first module for that project, Tianhe, was launched last month. Scientists from Europe and China are all working together on what's being called the most sophisticated experiment ever conducted in space. The experiment is trying to find out if cosmic radiation is a key cause of cancer for humans in space, while also addressing the side effects of radiation therapy for cancer patients on Earth. To do this, Dr. LaRose and her team will be carrying what are known as organoids from Earth to space. Organoids are very exciting. We actually take a biopsy from tumor tissue from a cancer patient. So it's a real tumor. And then with the stem cells from that real tumor from a cancer patient, we continue to clone it and to grow it into a lab. And it becomes three-dimensional in nature. And so this organoid, it mimics the structure and the function of the tissue that we take it from. So it's the closest biosample that we have to actually testing um, our research on real human beings. We are the first team to ever use organoids in space for cancer research. So this is a completely new technology. So because the organoids are close to human cancer cells, will that mean more accurate results? This is exactly true. We want to make sure that our results are as close to possible as what we would expect in a real human being. Dr. LaRose and her team will also be sending organoids of healthy human tissue. We're looking to see if cosmic radiation has a unique mutational signature at the level of the DNA in our organoid. If that's true, these mutational signatures act like fingerprints in our DNA. So we can then use that fingerprint to test astronauts, to test jet fighter pilots, to see if we can predict the risk, not just of cancer, but of any disease that's caused by cosmic radiation. So that's one of our hypotheses. So how are you trying to identify these novel signatures? So just like UV radiation on Earth causes cancer, we can look at our DNA and we can see these signatures that are present both in UV radiation and in skin cancer. And they match, they're like fingerprints. So we can do this in space, but the first thing we have to do is we have to be able to find that signature of cosmic radiation. It sounds like this should have already been done, but we're actually the first team to do it. And one of the major reasons we're the first team to do this is because we're using organoids. And because these organoids and the genetic material that are in these organoids are very closely related to a human being. Dr. LaRose's second hypothesis is that exposure to microgravity might slow or even stop the growth of cancer. There is some evidence for this, but what's really important is that we have to be able to distinguish between cosmic radiation and microgravity. So on board, we have something called a centrifuge, and that centrifuge spins our samples around so that our samples are actually exposed to the same level of gravity we would experience on Earth. So by doing this, we can be sure that our samples are only exposed to cosmic radiation because they have the 1G same gravitational force on Earth. And then we can do certain protective shielding over our experiment so that the cells, the organoids that are in microgravity 
have an extra protection against cosmic radiation, and we can be sure that they're only exposed to microgravity. In our research, we're looking at a colony survival. So we're sending these cancer organoids up into space, we're exposing them to microgravity, we're protecting them with an extra shielding against cosmic radiation. We're gonna feed them and see whether or not they grow and assume that this slowing or stopping of growth in cancer cells is because of a gene expression pathway that was previously found uh, from some Chinese uh, scientists on the Shenzhou mission. We know that space provides unique microgravity conditions which cannot be replicated on Earth. So how will you apply your findings here on Earth? I get that question all the time, and this is really difficult because we can't send every cancer patient up into outer space so that their cancer will slow or stop growing. There's also clinical applications in terms of looking at these different gene expression profiles. So in microgravity, everything tends to spread out. When you're an astronaut in space, you can grow up to seven extra centimeters in space. And so the biological pathways in these organoids also spread out. And when we're looking and observing to understand what happens at this biological level, we have more space in order to actually see and observe and understand what's happening. But it isn't just science for science sake for Dr. LaRose and her team. We're doing this research because cancer affects everyone in every country all around the world. So anything that comes out of this research is for the benefit of humanity. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and hit the bell button below for notifications.